I come to the crisis as a faculty member and as a UC uh, Berkeley alumna. <coughs> My concern about the restructuring of this university, particularly this campus, is not new. Last semester, I resigned as Associate Dean of International and Area Studies in protest of the EVCP's, what I believe, heavy-handed and unjustified restructuring of that unit. One that made six different majors that served thousands of students deeply vulnerable. That students screaming at each other, trying to fix problems they cannot fix. The ASUC Senate was a valuable ally in that struggle. And I thank you for that. I'm not going to rehearse the arguments that my colleagues have already made. Um, from my perspective, the crisis is multidimensional. There are three that have been on my mind recently. The first is that the public character of this university is in crisis, and for me that is, the, that is the issue of access. That issue of access is of course the issue of students from economically disadvantaged families, and whether or not they will have a right to a decent education in California. But it is also a story of the middle class crunch. I sat there helpless in my office yesterday as one of my students who's graduating in three years talk to me about how glad he is that he's graduating in three years because he wouldn't have been able to afford that fourth year of fees. Um, his parents, working professionals, have both lost their jobs, their home is in foreclosure, and yet when this student started on this campus, their family made just enough money so that he didn't qualify for any financial aid, and he thus graduates with massive loans. His family is now sharing a one-bedroom apartment with other families. He can't go back home. He needs to find a job. And above all, he cannot afford to continue his education. That's a common story. The New York Times reported today that middle-class incomes in this country are facing the steepest decline that they have in 40 years. The issue of access also has to do with how the issue of access also has to do with students who come from families of wealth and political privilege. Mm. I think there's a great mingling that happens on this campus. It's in places such as this that the socioeconomic and political hierarchies of a state like California are reworked. That for me is the California dream, to use a cliche. The second crisis, um, for lack of a better term, is what I've been calling a differentiated education. And some of you may have a better term for it. By that I mean a proliferation of differential fees that are being levied by different departments and colleges on this campus. My own college just voted to levy a $6,000 professional fee on all master's students. UCOP has presented to the regions for consideration the idea of a differential fee that can be imposed on upper division undergraduates in particular disciplines such as business, engineering, etc. Are those students who are going to pay those differential fees going to get a better education? I don't know. And if they do get a better education, why wouldn't others? Part of that differentiation also has to do with what um, Alan already pointed out, the two-tier system that is beginning to emerge. Someone like Bob Reich, an eminent teacher, because of budget cuts, being told by his department that he cannot have enough GSIs, and he does have to offer a tier, two-tier course. The full version, with discussion sessions where students have access to GSIs, and the low-budget mm -hmm. version, where students can only take it for two units without access to discussion sections and GSIs. I fear that this will become the rule rather than the exception a landscape of differentiated, tiered education on this campus. The third crisis is that the budget crisis is also a governance crisis. This became clear to me last semester when EVCP Breslauer was unable to explain his budget decision to abolish the IS deanship. As far as I was concerned, he did not show us the math. Mm. And it wasn't good enough for us to be consulted but to not really be heard. Quite frankly, that, that era of consultation has to come to a close. We need something else. So going forward, we not only need to think about new financial models, we also need to think about new governance models. I'm not ready to write off the academic senate as yet, but it is clear that in a state of emergency, we have to think about the power 
that our bodies of governance may or may not have. Alan pointed out that the non-Senate faculty who do quite a bit of undergraduate teaching on this campus are not even represented in these systems of shared governance. And where do students stand? How do you get to be at the table? And I think that issue of governance is going to be crucial because for me, the crisis is not just about the cuts. It's about how the cuts are being implemented. The crisis is about those who have designated themselves I hate to borrow a term from a previous political regime, the deciders. <laughs> How do we move forward in that system? You can think of yourselves only as consumers of your education, and if that's it, that's great. But then make sure that you get what you are paying for, because your education will be the most important thing you pay for. But if you're something more, if you are stakeholders and shareholders, then you will also have to think about the systems of governance on this campus and in the UC system that give all of you legitimacy, voice, and a seat at the table. So there's work to be done, and that work is not going to happen in a single day of walkouts. It's not going to happen through teachings. It will require stamina for the long road ahead. <coughs> With that in mind, September 24th is a start. The compelling resolution passed this weekend by the UC Student Association gave me great hope. What a lovely thing to wake up to on a Sunday morning. And it gave me hope because its main message was solidarity. And so I believe that the two guiding themes for September 24th are action and solidarity. Action, because we have to make visible the crisis of the UC system. And it is action, as you know, to address three important themes, a call for an end to rising fees, the protection of the lowest paid workers in our community, and an end to emergency powers. But solidarity is crucial because we have to do this together. Students, staff, Senate faculty, non-Senate faculty, we have to do this across the UC campuses. Some of you may know this, but I can't remember another time when the system-wide UC Student Association came together and called for a resolution uh, for a walkout. That is unprecedented, as Catherine mentioned. I think we're also going to have to learn how ultimately how to work with the community college systems and the CSU system. So on September 23rd, on Wednesday evening, there will be a teaching. You will hear about it. On September 24th, there will be union-led strikes and picket lines. On September 24th, there will be a solidarity rally at noon at Sproul. Also on September 24th, faculty and non-Senate faculty will engage in a range of solidarity actions. Some will walk out, some will teach in. And the question for all of you is whether or not on September 24th, there will be a mass walkout by students. Now, this has been portrayed in the media as faculty upset about furloughs. <laughs> I, I don't even know what it would mean for me to take a furlough. Am I going to tell the 720 students in my class I'm not going to answer their emails on my <laughs> furlough day and tell my PhD students I'm not going to read the draft of their dissertations or write recommendation <laughs> letters? We are in this, in this place together because we don't know how to draw those lines <laughs> between work and something else, yeah. right? <laughs> that may be a serious problem for some of us, but that's why we're here. One of the big crises that we face, I think, is the tactics of, of um, division. How students are going to be told that rising fees are the only things that will keep their faculty here. While well, some of us choose not to be on the East Coast, we are here without rising fees. <laughs> Some of you, some of the faculty will be told that staff have to be laid off so that faculty are not furloughed. Mm. Solidarity is going to be crucial. Mike Davis, uh, the urban historian based um, at UC Irvine. Riverside. Well, UC, sorry, UC Riverside, Riverside. yes. Um, Mike, in a recent email, talked about how the first class passengers are now in the same frigid waters as second class and third class passengers. He was in fact scolding the Senate faculty. But um, I think we are all in the same frigid waters. The crisis has shown how our fates are interconnected. Solidarity may be the most valuable resource we have going forward. And for me, therefore, September 24th is both a day of action and a day of solidarity. 
Our biggest challenge is going to be what we do after September 24th. What we do um, after that, the energy of that day has built up and how do we keep that up? Some of you who were quite involved in the campaign to elect President Obama have said how you felt the energy dissipate. Mm. You felt that that world of decision making now become distant, become once again a Washington DC thing. How do we keep this energy alive after September 24th? Thank you.